that's a that's a very interesting question now that, that we have in this space uh, uh, more than one option so it's a, it's a good problem to have and to think about uh, uh, if you look at the phase three data with the with the two studies that led to regorafenib and then the test 102 approval and they're two different they're both oral agents but they're different regorafenib is a targeted agent test 102 is uh, a cytotoxic so a chemotherapy agent um, the data with, uh, or the study with TAS-102, the recourse study, included about 15 to 20 percent patients who had prior regorafenib. Uh, the, uh, uh, the study, the correct study with regorafenib was before TAS-102 approval, so we have not had, at least on study experience, with TAS-102 first and then regorafenib second. So from a practical purpose right now, the way we're doing it in clinic is, uh, after you get to the third, fourth line of therapy, we're introducing regorafenib first, and then uh, upon progression, then uh, patients would uh, go on TAS-102. There are some exceptions. Uh, so let's say a patient has uh, significant liver function abnormalities or had some significant hand and foot syndrome from prior, prior capecitabine or even infusional 5-FU, may consider moving TAS-102 ahead of regorafenib. Uh, there are also other instances where patients may have significant bone marrow toxicities from prior therapies, and those patients probably would be less of candidates for TAS-102 first. So from practical purposes right now, just to follow the spirit of the trials, we're going with regorafenib first and then TAS-102 second.